Why do economists use elasticity instead of slope? And the number one reason here is going to be the fact that slope depends on the units that you choose. For example, if you're measuring the quantity of cheese that people consume in response to the price of cheese, well, you could measure cheese in ounces, you could measure it in pounds, you could measure it in grams. So for example, let's look at a case where we have a $1 increase in the price of cheese, and that leads to a one pound decrease in the amount of cheese that people actually buy. Rise over run says the slope here is one, but if instead we started measuring this in terms of ounces, we're going to have the same situation, a $1 increase in the price leads to a 16 uh, ounce decrease in the quantity of cheese purchased. So that slope goes from negative one to negative one sixteenth just by changing how we measure cheese, how we measure the x-axis. And that's something that economists don't really like because it means it's highly situationally dependent. Whereas with elasticity, it's percent change in dependent variable, which up here, the quantity someone purchases is dependent, and that's divided by the percent change in independent variable, percent change in the price. So this is actually going to get at something else that we care about. So is it a really big response if people are buying one pound fewer or a really small, small response? And there's actually not enough context up here for us to tell. So for example, or at least there's not enough context based on just the slope. So for example, if that elasticity is capturing pounds per month and that store was really only selling two pounds per month, and there's suddenly a one pound decrease in the amount of cheese they're selling, that's actually 50% of their uh, stock of cheese is no longer being sold. That's a huge thing for the store, that 50% decrease. Whereas if they're selling like 100 pounds a month of cheese and they have a one pound decrease in cheese when they raise the price by a dollar, that's actually not that big of a deal. So by capturing the percent change in dependent over percent change in independent, you have more information captured uh, with this elasticity. However, that's not the only benefit of elasticity. So another benefit is going to be the fact that elasticities can be compared across different types. Like a 0.1 elasticity, economists kind of know what that means. It means if you increase the independent variable by 10%, you get a 1% increase in the dependent variable. And that's going to be true across all types of goods, regardless of how you measure it, regardless of how you're thinking about this relationship. So economists can kind of get an intuitive sense of what is a 0.1 elasticity, what's an elasticity of one, what's an elasticity of three, which of those is a huge behavioral response, which is a fairly small behavioral response. Now, obviously you have to put it into context of how meaningful the change is, is like the dependent variable just um, quantity of cheese purchased versus deaths. So maybe a 0.1% decrease in deaths is a huge deal from an economic or from an intuitive or clinical perspective, whereas a 0.1% decrease uh, in cheese purchase just doesn't matter as much. But the fact that economists can use this measure across many contexts and develop an intuition for what different types of elasticities mean, that's going to be really helpful, especially when we try to map different relationships onto these complex models that we're building. So another kind of interesting and helpful uh, reason to use elasticity is it kind of forces you to think about the starting point. Like going from here to here, that's a 100% increase in your independent variable. And the dependent variable also has maybe not a 100% increase, but maybe a 60% increase going along with this. Whereas if you're way out here, um, going the same distance, like let's say we increase it by this distance, this is going from, th this is roughly a 20% increase. And therefore where you start on the graph matters a lot. And it just adds this context to the thing that you're measuring.
So I kind of must really do like elasticity. If you work with elasticity long enough, you develop really helpful intuitions for how it how it works. Now, one interesting thing about elasticity on a demand graph is that the elasticity on a linear line up here versus down here is actually really different. So we have here, our dependent variable is our quantity. Going from here to here, we have a small decrease in the percent change in price and a huge increase, like a, basically a 100% increase in the quantity purchased. So that's going to be a large number divided by a small number, that's a large elasticity. Whereas down here on this linear line, the slope is the same, but you actually have the reverse is true. Like you have basically, if you capture between these two points, you have a 100% decrease in price. Price is the independent variable, that's the denominator, and a uh, probably a 10% increase in quantity. So that's going to be a small elasticity down here just because the percent changes are different on these two different points in the graph. And economists actually prefer this because up here, you actually have a pretty big response in terms of the thing you're trying to increase, quantity, without changing the price much. That's really different than changing the price a whole lot, cutting it in half, and getting a tiny percent increase in demand. So elasticity is just going to map better onto the intuition of the real economic phenomenon we're trying to capture.